Namaskar. Today, I'd like to talk about evil. What is it exactly? Why does it exist and how do we deal with it? If we look around the world today, we see a lot of suffering and, and evil everywhere. Some of it's caused by nature, some of it's caused by humans' mistreatment of their fellow humans or other creatures. Looking too much in this direction, we might feel hopeless or depressed about our human condition. We might think, well, if there's such a thing as a God, why is there so much suffering and, and evil everywhere? I will try to explain this both on the individual level and on the cosmic level. According to the yogic philosophical text Ananda Sutra, Shiva Shaktiyat Makang Brahma, Brahma or that infinite being is composed of consciousness and its creative principle. This entire creation emerges from that one unqualified infinite consciousness due to the binding by its creative principle. And so this duality we, is called by different names in different cultures. So it's a universal law that opposites will coexist side by side in a never-ending game and play. Positive and negative, good and bad, darkness and light, knowledge and ignorance. The yogis call this lila or cosmic play or divine play because it's all happening within the body and mind of that cosmic being of Brahma. In the first stage of human life, the, when we evolve from the lower life forms, the, the memory of those lower forms are imprinted in the subtler levels of our minds. And so we indulge in and we enjoy the apparent pleasures we can get from the sensory organs. This is the lowest stage of human life, similar to an animal life. And we're very much bound by what the yogis call avidya, maya, or the force or the energy tending towards crudeness or ignorance. And some people get so deeply immersed in this avidya maya that they commit many harmful deeds to others. They are bound under the influence of avidya maya by the satripu, the six enemies and the ashtapasha, or the eight fetters. So the six enemies are physical passion, anger, greediness, blind attachment, pride, and jealousy. And the eight fetters, or eight bondages, are shame, hatred, fear, doubt, backbiting, vanity of culture, bondage of lineage, and, and egotism. So they go so far away from uh, Vidya Maya's opposite pair, which is called Vidya Maya. And Vidya Maya means the force or the energy leading towards knowledge or liberation. Maya here means illusion. Uh, it's an illusion because it's part of the duality. It's not the original cause, which is, is, which is the oneness, that universal consciousness. So in a simple way, we can say that evil is the absence of good. Just like unhappiness is the absence of happiness, or ignorance is the absence of knowledge, and darkness is the absence of light. So is it necessary? Yes, it's part of the universal law. Opposites will coexist side by side. And darkness makes light more luminous. So if you have a painting, or you have a garland of flowers, it's just that much more attractive when there's a combination of colors, both dark and light. So how do we deal with the badness or evil when we come across it? The, the universe is called a jagat in Sanskrit, moving entity. So everything is in constant change and mobility. We cannot ignore that evil or that, that darkness, even wherever it might be. So keeping as spiritual aspirants, we should keep our mind on our transcendental goal. And with that ideation, we deal with that uh, person or that object, thereby we won't be influenced by its negative or potentially harmful influence over us. Keeping our mind, ascribing oneness or the, the infinite being to that, to that object or that person. And this method of ascribing oneness 
you will learn in your second lesson of the personal meditation techniques. So the yogis had always emphasized the importance of satsanga. Satsanga means keeping spiritual company, the company of persons that are trying to evolve themselves spiritually. And at the same time, to avoid those people or those environments which would discourage us from evolving ourselves spiritually. And so in this regard, you know, all of us have a, a certain resultant from our thoughts, our actions, our, our words. Either we, our resultant is a merit of 10 or a demerit, 5, 10, 15, etc. So a good advice to follow is that if, I, if my resultant merit is, say, 15, and I'm going to meet someone whose resultant demerit is 20, I will be pulled into the negative influence of that person. So in the same way, if I go, go to a, a place where, with a group of people whose resultant merits are, say, 30, then it's likely that our resultant merits will be more than the demerits that, of that potentially harmful place. So some people think that there's a devil, and the devil uh, challenges the Supreme Being and causes us to commit evil acts. As I've explained, the Supreme Being is one, and someone who ideates on that Supreme Entity becomes one, merges into it. Because as we have explained in many videos in the channel, that as a person thinks, so they become. This is the law of the mind. We may choose to follow a noble way, we have a free will, or to follow an evil way. So the, the destructive aspect is only one aspect of that universal being or Brahma. The first is, it's G, it's a generator or creator. It's O, it operates what it has created and it destroys, G-O-D. But that third aspect, that destruction, is not something bad or harmful or sad. It's actually part of that never-ending game. When something is old, it, it has to leave, just like my, my shirt. When it's old and tattered, I discard it for something new. So that constant change from the old and renewal is, is part of this leela or cosmic game, cosmic play. Another universal law is the law of cause and effect. And that law says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So whatever I consciously do with my mind, it creates a, an impression in my mind. And in order for my mind to regain its original form or equilibrium or balance, I have to go through the reaction to that action. So by doing bad actions, I have to suffer the consequences of those bad actions. And so this law teaches us that we should perform good actions because the positive reactions from those actions will create a favorable environment for us to in, evolve our higher self, to develop our spiritual nature. If I'm poor or I'm hungry or I'm diseased, that unfavorable condition will not be suitable for me to develop my higher consciousness. So if somebody commits many, many bad actions, they will have to suffer the reactions to those and may, they may not get a human life in their next birth because they've misutilized that rare opportunity of human life. So we may take solace in the fact that someone who, who commits a lot of evil actions, they, they have to suffer the consequences according to this universal law of cause and effect. That's why my master used to say, there's no injustice in the court of God. So. We should not kill or eliminate, uh, try to eliminate the negative within us. The, uh, the Ananda Sutram text says that Bada sajusmana shakti sevyam stapayati lakye. Obstacles are not enemies on our spiritual path, they're friends because we develop a strength and courage to overcome the negative force. And with that strength of mind, it accelerates our movement towards that supreme transcendental goal. So we should not try to kill or eliminate, but utilize the opportunity presented by a negative situation or a negative person to strengthen our own positive qualities. And then we become good examples for others to follow. That's the essence of the spiritual path. The more we move along this path and the more we practice the, the, the practices and the teachings from this path, 
the happier we are. The more meaningful our life is, the healthier we, we are, and the more pure we become. Until finally we attain that state of oneness with that universal consciousness. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar.